Hey, everybody, what's going on? It is Lauren Delisa Coleman back with you again for another episode of the Inside Series here at Filmio. And I am super excited to bring you this next interview. You guys know by now, sometimes we give you kind of a sneak preview um, at festivals. Sometimes we are deep into it during the festival. And occasionally we get to do some on the back end of a festival. We have a filmmaker who, like we're about to interview, is a little bit like too busy and too fabulous to get during the festival. And in most cases, that's really great. And in this case, it is super great because now we get to speak to him as a winner from Cannes. So everybody, please join me in welcoming Felix Van Groningen, who is the filmmaker behind Eight Mountains. Um, and I'm so glad that you can take out the time to do this um Felix, especially because it's a little bit later there where you are, as he told me just offline, he's kind of getting back into his normal routine, although I'm sure after, you know, winning a, a jury, the jury prize at um, a Cannes Film Festival, there's no such thing as normal after that. So first of all, congratulations. And yes, please start by giving us a synopsis of this beautiful film, Eight Mountains. Eight Mountains is a story of um, friends, of friendship. It's a story of Peter and Bruno who meet when they're kids. Um, and they meet in a little mountain village when, uh, when they're 11 years old. And Bruno is a, a kid from the mountains and Pietro is a kid from the city. And they will keep meeting each other for the next 30 years. Um, uh, as they as they you know grow older and and are are confronted with with simple things but but very essential things in life uh, we see how they deal with 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 love with with uh, their ancestry with what they want in life and uh, and it's all told through uh, through through their friendship I think that is a great way to describe it this um Film is based on the book Paolo um, Cognetti's prize-winning novel. Yep. And so um, let's, I guess, kind of get into, there's so many different questions that are running through my mind right now about this. But first of all, just to stand out for me was that, and I hope I'm, you know, I got this right in a lot of the research that I did on this. Did you actually learn Italian to a certain extent to be able to really be immersed in in the, the story? And what kind of, I don't know, made you made you kind of take that route. Hey, I was wondering if you were going to join us. Hi, I really did my best to come as fast as I can. Ter traffic was terrible. I'm sorry. I did. That's I was okay. Hey, I'm glad that you can make it. So everybody, this is Hi. Charlotte, who is, I guess, a co like, you know, fabulousness on all things eight mountain Charlotte. Um, please. I don't want to like, you know, ruin your, your last name. So I want to say it's, Vander Mish, but I'm not sure. Would you pronounce it for me, please? Well, we pronounce it Vander Mish. Okay. Say that too far off. That's good. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm just like really getting into the, the start of the questions. Um, Felix was, you know, kind enough to give us a synopsis, and we were just about to um, kind of talk about how you guys actually decided to even learn Italian to really like kind of get into the making of, of this picture. Like, I mean, talk about dedication. So how did that like come about? Did both of you decide or did one have to take the other down and be like, if you don't learn it, we're not doing this. Like, how did it, how did it all work out? Um, uh, well, the, I was proposed a book and um, I read it and very quickly decided that I wanted to do it, um, but also that I wanted to do it in Italian because it's an Italian book, but it was proposed to me as an international project, maybe to shoot it in English. And, um, and I was immediately like, yes, I want to do it. I think it makes sense, but I don't want to transpose it. I mean, it's a very authentic book and it's a very, yeah. everything about it, it just makes sense. And you feel that it's based on real people, real places. And um, and so it didn't make sense. And I thought it was a big challenge to to learn Italian to do it. Yeah, it feels just, just very much like uh, I'm gonna do this, but I'm gonna do it in Italian. I was like, how so? I'm gonna learn Italian. Oh, great! <laughs> then we started writing together, <laughs> and during the writing process, which went really well, and we appreciated that both our points of view really added up. 
uh, for yeah to tell this story. And so at a certain point after our, we, we wrote our first draft and we were happy about it and people, producers were happy, uh, he, he proposed to me <laughs> at the kitchen table to, uh, yeah, to just make the whole film together, do the dire directing together. And uh, yeah, so, so that was the road we went on. For me, it was very uh, evident to also go for, for the Italian and, and we just went for it. And uh, because it's also such a, a rich thing to also, you know, how, how do you say like, yeah, take the language and, and really internalize it um, to tell this very beautiful story uh, in, in the best possible way. Um, it was a gift for me also. I do think it just um, shows such dedication and it is very true that you you kind of get into the mind of whatever culture or person you're talking to, if you can do it in their language or his or her language, because language, it shows kind of what what we think and what we find important, depending on where like the direct object is and the adjective. And if there is an adjective or an article, do you know what I mean? So I, I can definitely... Um, identify with this when I first learned, um, started to learn French when I lived in Paris and it brought you into the mind of the people. But I have to say, you know, I would not do that just for a project. So you guys are like really no joke. Now, what year was that when you started, um, you know, kind of learning Italian and just kind of starting to really kind of, I guess, break down the book? Um, when we first, the first, um, the first, Two drafts we wrote, we didn't, uh, we weren't learning Italian yet. We started to learn Italian the moment we started to prep the project, basically, which was a year, about a year before Fall we of shooting. 2020. Yeah. Fall of 2020. We, we started learning because we, we started casting and we started doing auditions in Italian and we started casting the kids and, and then we had to speak Italian because they didn't, they just, they only spoke Italian. We started to work with the writer, with Paolo, to to um, translate the dialogue to Italian. Um, it sounds like you were kind of learning as you were actually creating the yeah. project. In my mind, that you were learning and then said, "Okay, now let's start the project." But um, you yeah. know, talk about incentive, right? So, what was it like when you reached out to Paolo um, to be able to say, "Okay, you know what, we're going to." start like working on this how how is that collaboration process i'm just really you know curious because of course the original author you want to maintain integrity but obviously this is a visual scenario as opposed to that which is of text how was that experience you know at least for you guys that journey being able to work with the author and bring this to life for the screen well it went very or, or organically, I would say. He has always, um, from the start, in, in like even before we started writing on this together, right? He, we, we were on a trip in Italy. We discovered that he was in the mountains in his mountain hut where he lives in um, like half of the year. And I, I don't know, Felix and, and Babu got in touch and he invited us over. So instead of like driving mm. south, which we were going to in our camper van, we drove up north and he received us there and he showed us around to his, his inspirational places. Uh, he introduced us to his friends who were inspirations for uh, characters. He, he just really opened up his world. That was like the first time we met and he immediately gave his trust, I would say. He mm. never like force anything upon us. We always consulted him. It was, he was like our artistic consultant because as we uh, worked on the project, we of course dug in more and more, but he was her, our portal, let's say. And then of course we went there when we, we went to visit all of, all of those locations and we, uh, well, we got to know people ourselves, but it was initially through him and through his book and he really opened it up to a next level. So that's great. I mean, it sounds like it was just a, a beautiful relationship right from the start, no? Absolutely. And, and until the very end and, and, and way beyond the end. I mean, he, yeah. he, he's, he became a really good friend and not just with us, but also with, with all of the actors, I would say. They all uh, love him and he was, all, he was uh, very, very um, inviting to everyone and very open and very... And he shared like his whole world with, with every one of them. So 
it's been uh, it's he's been a, a great journey. inspiration for Luca Marinelli for his, the character also for Pietro yeah he was really an inspiration they went walking up those mountain tops all the time uh, Luca stayed preparing for the part for months and stayed very close to, to Paolo also that's so amazing because I mean obviously that's not always the case with authors sometimes they're not available sometimes they don't want to be you know available so that was just amazing to have him that much um i think intertwined with um the actual making of the film so yeah. tell me a little bit about like kind of the, the boots on the ground making you know of this what kind of challenges did you guys maybe run into that was i don't know were either maybe anticipated unanticipated or or what because when you look at it it just is like I don't know, almost watching like one of your best dreams. It's very just smooth and beautiful. And you're like, wait, why is it like really like that? Right. Just the way that you've been able to portray it. And I mean, I think that, you know, I've read that as well, maybe from critics in variety and even the LA times, because I love how after can they always say like who won and like who should have won, which I always think is really like, it's a shame for like, if anybody's reading it, who won, but like, the times doesn't think that person should have won. You're like, what a piece, but you guys were one of the few, which was like one and should have won. And the first, you know, things just like, you know, effusive about the, the sheer beauty and richness of the images. How did you kind of come to be able to craft that? I know that obviously is in large part to, you know, the DP, but just, you know, in terms of being able to capture a lot of, of that look and, you know, maybe, weather or nature not always cooperating or what have you, how do you kind of, you know, I don't know, either bridge the gap with that or any other maybe technical elements that were challenging? Um, you know, everything was challenging, I would say, because, because it's not easy to shoot a movie in the, in the mountains. That's what we knew up front and, and we've discovered it multiple times along the way. But we, you know, we... There were a couple of things. We said, like, it, it's got to be as real as possible. So we're really going to build a house at, at 2,000 meters. We're really going to go up the glacier with, with our actors. Um, and um, uh, so there was that. And then, and then try and embrace everything that's going to happen as much as we can. And because of that, we needed to be as flexible as possible. And that was like a constant fight and a constant... Um, fight with ourselves and with production. I mean, in, in the best possible way, but like it's, it's, it's hard because there's so much coming in between that to be as flexible as possible. Uh, calendars of actors and other stuff. And mm. So, but that we had to guard the whole time. No, we have to be as flexible as possible because if it's good weather, we will be able to go up. If it's bad weather, we won't. And we have to, you know, know what else. Plan A, else. plan B. Plan, plan C. Best, plan, C. <laughs> plan C, right. right. Yeah. And that's the only way we're really going to be able to capture the, yeah, the, the, the richness of the mountain. And uh, uh, so there's that. And then, you know, as I said, it had to be as real as possible. And because of that, we we're clear to the whole crew and actors from the beginning, like it's gonna be a tough movie. You're gonna have to walk. We're gonna have to fly with helicopters up there. We're gonna have to, um, you know, make impossible hours. And, uh, and we, you know, we, we, we want you there. Um, but once that people are, a whole crew is on that mind, mindset, is in that mindset, it's amazing what you can do and what, mm. you, what you achieve and, um, and it's and it's actually it's the most uh, incredible thing you can live because you start to feel that everybody gets it and wants it and understands it and goes for it. Um, to give you an example, we we slept in a, a mountain hut with the whole film crew with twenty five people, just all in sleeping bags like this, like you know, smelling each other <laughs> <laughs> because it was tiny and we wanted to sleep there because we wanted to capture the evening light and the morning light and then go up the glacier. So it was the only possible way we could do it. You and a lot of actors wouldn't have done it, but of, the you know, movie did it. I, I mean, you guys are just a picture of dedication. I think any time, the next time I like don't even want to walk like 15 blocks in Manhattan, I'll be like, but wait a second. 
<laughs> those guys, right? Because I mean, you're even like building houses and stuff. You know, it just kind of, I think we always marvel at this when, you know, it just kind of reminds me of like, you know, Peter Jackson saying so much had to be real for Lord of the Rings, right? Even the the, the um, swords and all that, everything was real, right? And so I think that takes a certain amount of not I think I know, like really patience, right? Because it takes a while to build a house. You could have maybe found a little hut up there if you really looked, you know, long enough. How do you maintain um, really just, I guess, that kind of persistence of, uh, you know, working on a project at that, at that really, it's a really high level of craftsmanship, right? So it's just surely the love of the project, the love of the craft, or what is it? Because like you said, Charlotte, sometimes, okay, it was smelly, whatever, you know, how do you, how do you still like kind of not shortcut maybe when things get a little bit tougher, a little bit longer, do you know what I mean? It's the mood you get into, right? I mean, we didn't, I mean, yes, we didn't know we had to build it uh, uh, and we wanted to build it, but then it's like by being there, we, we went to, uh, we started location scouting a year before shooting and then the more you get into it, the more you feel like this is what we need. And then just, I don't know, not withhold, not, I mean, know what, I guess <sighs> making a film is hard because you always have dreams and then there's the reality. And I, I, I and I think it's, it's like um, the challenge is <laughs> not to give up on your dream, even if it gets hard, find solutions and convince people that, that those are the, that's, that's the path to go. And sometimes, yeah, you have to uh, <laughs> give up too, I guess, but, but not, not, <laughs> not quickly. Felix is not giving up. <laughs> Felix is really... <laughs> I was going to say, Charlotte, your face is just looking like, you know what? Maybe there were a few times I wanted to give up, but he was not going to let me give up, right? I would just be amazed because, you know, I, I, I'd i never been on that side, uh, directing or, you know, I've been an actor. Uh, but um, so I, I was uh, always up for it. I mean, we, we did everything. Uh, we worked long days. Uh, I all, also tried to be a mom, like, uh, you know, to, um, yeah, we have a son and we were very busy. So that was like, I was trying also to be the mom while Felix was doing the whole planning. He was being the assistant to, the, to his own director. I mean, he was just, <laughs> <laughs> he was just managing all of his like plan A, plan B. It was, it, it was incredible. I really have to say, I, 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 I observed that and I, I think I supported it and, and we really went there and, uh, I never said no, and I never said, but but at certain times when you see produce like the line producer go like uh, uh I don't know I I I just sit and then I, I watch this man I'm like maybe it's not possible and then I just see Felix okay okay if we can't do this we're gonna do it this way and bah! you know he just go <laughs> he's very headstrong he's very headstrong but I feel like in a in a good way though it's like you don't want to maybe let him down because like there's just like all this passion it's not like push it's like join me in like creating history you're like oh, okay i can't say no to that you know what i mean because like something amazing is happening yeah he's a really good cooperator so he's really gonna take everything into account but some things it just ha they just need to happen and and they will happen and he just drags everyone along and 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 there's me also like next to him like saying, oh we need this person we need this one. i'm gonna talk there i'm gonna you know we just i think it was it was a big thing to do so i think i had the uh, I had my yin to his yang going and on. And so I guess that's maybe a good segue into the fact that you, you guys are both professional and personal partners, right? How I'm always just fascinated by that because it's like super intense. Like you're with each other, and especially in this case, 24 seven. I mean, how do you make it work? It's just like, you guys need to be doing like a blog on this or something, right? Because people can't make it work without working together and without working together. And if they do work together, maybe not in the mountains or whatever. Do you, how do you find that you create like an equilibrium or a balance and that you, I mean, I don't know, you know, I hate to be stereotypical, but you know, Charlotte, not maybe still maintain yourself, whatever that is within, you know, the, the unit as a couple professionally and personally, right? How do you do that? Oh, it, it was a, it was a first, I mean, we have worked together, but in uh, never distant tense. Um, mm -hmm. huh? um, I made films where she either 
helped out in the writing or um or or was a partner at home and and would watch cuts with me or and we would talk about a lot so 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 in that way we had worked together or as an actress and me the director uh, but never this this um intense and for so long and and, and we, we would never have thought that we would do this up front. I don't know, it just happened. Yeah. And it happened because it made sense for the project and it made sense at this point in our lives uh, where we had uh, had gone through a difficult moment, uh, yet wanted to stick together and, and sit it out or sweat it out. <laughs> and, and, and COVID happening and lockdown and, and realizing because of that, that we actually were really good together and that it was, good to spend so much time together and oh. it's kind of like an all or nothing moment for us so. i super must love this whole thing if you guys have been through all this and co- like you said covid and everything else you're going to be like together like for 152 years or something right <laughs> because you've done the hardest what else what more challenge could there be that is always um, a nice mountain to go you know to climb. right <laughs> The only other thing yeah, yeah. left is like, you know, I don't maybe underwater, like the next the next project's underwater. Um, but let's talk, you know, really briefly about is, your- I mean, making a film is just so intense that it's it's like the to be able to share everything with the person you love the most is really an incredible experience. But because of that, you you have to be, you know, at a at a good uh place both <laughs> and and it creatively has to click and because of the writing together i realized yeah creatively this is really mm, interesting yeah that was never a problem i mean and if you would ever have discussions on set we would really keep them between us and also like just i know just agree really quickly this way that way you okay. know not like a scene we didn't want to make us like a subject on the and it we, and that wouldn't help anything and it never really happened like we we that was really good for us that we learned to like uh pro, like problem solution how do you say solution making that went really really fast yeah and uh so that really gave us some confidence also like as a couple that was really great cool. great that, that we understand go yeah, yeah. Well, and obviously to be able to, to pull all of this off at such a high level, this is not your first time at the rodeo, as we say here in, in you know America. What do you feel from your professional backgrounds that you brought, like that helped you to be able to create such success? I mean, obviously, as you said, Charlotte, you're an actress and <clears throat> excuse me, Felix, you've directed, you know, certainly well before, but every project is, is new and has its own kind of, you know, set of craziness going on. What do you feel that you pull from as, again, professionals in, in your respective spaces before that helped you in this manner? Yeah, I, I could say I have a, a love for, uh, I know the a good basis of, of any story is a good story written down, analyzed, thought through, felt through, um, it should be detailed and, and like that you can feed the actors and feed anyone who's working on it, the, the, the production designer, uh, the costume designer, anyone like that they are inspired by it. So this is my work in the theater and um, also for screen, of course. I mean, I, I've all, all often lacked this kind of material myself. Mm. Now that I could like, cooperate on this and we had the book, which is already so rich and it was like, this script is going to be rich and, you know, it's going to, it's going to hold so much love <laughs> and, and I don't know, you know, emotion and detail and fantasy uh, in it. So everyone will be like, I want everyone, anyone who reads it to, to feel that and feel attracted to it and want to like give themselves it. And I think every uh, head of the department also really felt this. Like we had a very strong creative team. Um, so, um, and I really loved also the directing of the actors. Uh, that was, uh, yeah, we started chronologically with the little guys, the 12 year olds, and uh, they had never acted. So we prepared them. Uh, we learned, you know, Italian also, especially for this, because we wanted to communicate directly with them. And um, I don't know, Felix is a very good uh, <clears throat> director. 
but it was so much. The set was so big and we had yeah. so such little time on mountaintops. So uh, to really spend also like, it was good to have two pairs of eyes and ears mm -hmm. for the Italian dialogue for all, just like all the little things. And I really that makes uh, sense. love it. That definitely makes yeah. sense. And Felix, you, you've directed at least what, five films prior to this, no? Six. 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 Yeah, okay. six. I would say that the, so the movie before this I made in the US and it was called Beautiful Boy and it was my first English language film. Right. Um, um, you know, I also was very dedicated. I moved to LA to, to make that movie and, and, and edit it there. And um, for me, I, I had never necessarily, I mean, I had never the idea that I was going to become a Hollywood director or anything. So it, it was never the plan to stay there or to keep making movies there. Uh, so I came back home and, um, and, uh, but, and, and it was great. It was hard at times too, but it especially gave me the confidence to, you know, to get out of my comfort zone, to work mm. with different people. Although the, the key people are, 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 have always been the same people, Ruben Impens, who's the DOP and Nico Lunen, who's the editor. Uh, they've worked on all uh, seven films. Um, but you know, to work in a different environment with a different culture, with different people, with different, you know, actors, to jump into a new world uh, was really exciting. And, and because of that, that was, it, it is one other reason why I thought like, let's make this film in Italian. Let's get to know uh, our culture. We know less. Very yeah. cool. So tell us about Ken. How many days were you there and how many parties and everything else? No, <laughs> um, this is not your first time at Ken, correct? I had been there. I only go there if I have a movie. So it was my second time. Okay. So, and Charlotte, what about you? Had you been there before? It was my third time. The first time was with him. Okay. Because uh, we've been together a long time. So I, I came with him as his partner for uh, the misfortunates. Then I did, I don't know, I did like uh, work for, on an animation film that premiered at Cannes and they, like the Belgian distributor, put me there like to make some promotion so i yeah i was only so you guys were like totally comfortable with ken so well, what do you I, feel was either different better same like the first post-pandemic ken well i mean i can't it's just it, it, I mean, it was it's, a totally it's yeah. a completely different experience right than, yeah as in everything we yeah. experienced before yeah because it's competition, because you, you have a film in competition there, everything is different. The attention, yeah. the, the, the reception, the, you know, so it's, it's, it's kind of, so, so it's been, it's been a couple of days now, a week and a half almost, I don't know. But we've been think. I mean, I've been having the feeling that it was sort of a bit of a, a dream. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Felix is superstitious, so he doesn't want to be there if he doesn't need to be there. So what I discovered how is how much work it is. We we did like interviews for eight hours. You would no. go to your, your hotel room, there'd be someone waiting in front of the door to like take your makeup off, to put new makeup on, put yeah, put your dress on, go to the red carpet. I mean, or to the it was just uh, it was it was a lot of work yes. and exhilarating at the same time. <laughs> we, we lived on adrenaline. I, 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 we didn't sleep much more than two hours a night. Because yeah, I can only imagine. I mean, just being there without having a film and competition, you know, as media, it's really fun, but also very intense. Um, so to have a film there, it must be like double that. And then you win. Right. So then what what does that feel like? Can you even describe it or? I mean, does like your, do you, do you leave your body and like, you see like yourself <laughs> floating over yourself or like, what is it? Uh, and did you think you would win? Is... Be honest. Did you think you would kind of be like, okay, we're in there kind of like, there's maybe one other where it could be a little, but oh, you know, we, like, we, we feel good. Did you feel like it was pretty well going to be yours or did you, were you really genuinely completely surprised? Uh, you surprised. become very, you become very I was uh, insecure and we were surprised, although we, we always, that's what I wanted to say. The moment we started working on this film, we knew it was a special project. We knew it could do this. Mm. We wouldn't, I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's what we felt from, from the beginning on. It was, it's a story about 
simple, honest, pure people. And it moved us like to the bone. And we felt that it could move a lot of people, um, that it could speak to people and that it was the right story at the right time. Um, yeah, of course, you know, uh, yeah. when you make a film, there's a lot of opinions and people involved and there's a lot. It's just a lot of pressure. Right. So it, it becomes uh, scary at the moment and you become insecure, but, but we've never, I mean, we've always felt that. And so based on that, I would say, yes, we felt that it was right that we would win something, <laughs> but we had given up. <laughs> so when the call came that we had to go back to Cannes, we were super, super, super happy. And so, yeah, you know, we, we, we sort of had the whole experience. That's so uh, great. Amazing. Oh my God. So now after that, then do you just like, totally decide to take a year long vacation or are you guys already thinking about what your next project is or what what's your particular route now after that and being able to breathe like a little bit which i'm sure you still need a, a few more weeks to breathe after all that yeah, and exactly. there will still be a lot of work to uh, to release the movie in the rest of the world etc etc it never stops really but um i, I was super tired and then it just i have to say it gave me a lot of adrenaline so i'm 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 eager to start working again, actually. That's good. And I mean, I feel like Belgium is a, like, I mean, I haven't been there for some reason. I don't know. I've been to different, you know, countries in, in Europe and especially while I was living there. But for somehow, I don't know. I always missed Belgium. But I feel like it's just a nice, chill place where if you're going to recuperate and regenerate, that seems like a great, you know, kind of country to do it in, no? <laughs> it is. Say, I Laura, we, I think we're going to have to leave you because we have another... No problem. Uh, well, I just appreciate you guys you. taking the time. And um, yeah, just really much success. How can my viewers um, kind of keep in touch or like up, rather keep up with what you're doing? Because um, I know the next thing is going to be insane. Are you guys active across social or what's what's the best I'm not, way? The I'm best? Not. <laughs> no? Uh, yeah, that's... The, I, I, is. I, I, I'm on Instagram, not on Tinder. Okay. <laughs> so what, what's your handle on Instagram? It's my name, Charlotte Van Der Meers. But okay. It has a strange, but you'll find me. I mean, wait, what's the, but the, what's the production name? company's name? Surely the production company has a website, no? Oh, yeah. No, I, we have to start it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, the production yeah, company like, is called Rufus, but it's brand new. It's our okay. son. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. like, I mean, who cares at this point? If you won the, uh, the jury prize at can, like, maybe you don't need to have an official website. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Usually no, the things go no. the other way. I'm but not on social. I never needed it. So I don't but think it's I true. For Rufus Films, which will produce <laughs> Felix and mine's movies, um, that, that, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I'll make an account and then people can know what we're up to. Okay, you guys, you heard it here first. You guys, thank you so much, Charlotte and Felix. I hope you have a great rest of the evening there and continued success in your career. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. You guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed this interview. You can't help but like love these two. And um, do check out Eight Mountains. I'm Lauren Delisa Coleman for the Inside Series. Thank you so much for watching.